What Mad Universe by Frederick Brown. All right, so this is the 12th book in a series I'm doing called The Masterpieces of Science Fiction. There's 140 books in this series. And this was number 12. This is the first book I've read from Frederick Brown, and he wrote this book in 1949. Now, I have this really nice vintage paperback. It was issued at 25 cents. It's in really good condition, and I like the cover, but I'm, I'm pretty good at reading these paperbacks very carefully without breaking the spine. That's kind of one of my pet peeves. But I also have this collection of novels by Frederick Brown from Nefsa Press called Martians and Madness. And so I actually read the story out of here to make sure I saved my paperback and didn't damage it. Now let's get into the book. So the plot of this book is we have a main character named Keith Winton and he is a pulp fiction writer and he he works for a company that publishes all these different kind of pulp magazines. And the setting of this book is, is probably a, a near future from when Frederick Brown wrote it. So probably in the 1950s or 1960s. And our main character, he's kind of trying to get a relationship going with one of his co-workers. She works as an editor for the romance uh, portion of the Pulp Fiction Company. And he's kind of trying to get science fiction going and leading that kind of end of the, the company. Now, the humanity is just getting ready to kind of get space travel going and they're gonna send a rocket up to the moon right around this time and they did this, this rocket in a way, they developed it to where when it got close to the moon's surface, it would make this big bright light and everybody on the planet would be able to see that they really did make it to the moon and all of this. And so right when we start the story, we get a little background on our character and then he's walking around doing his thing and lo and behold, something happens right next to him. And it turns out the rocket crashes right next to him and kind of knocks him out. When he wakes up, he starts to realize that he's everything is kind of the same but kind of different. There's subtle differences to the world, like he the the company that he worked for is still there. The the lady who he's trying to get together with is still there, but she doesn't really know him when he when he tried calling. Um, there's little differences that he starts noticing, like people don't use regular money, they're using credits instead, and when they see regular money, they're acting really weird and, and like they want to run away from him. And then he starts noticing bigger differences in this world, like at night there's these creatures that fly around and hunt anybody down that's walking around at night and attempt to kill them. There's also these seven foot tall, purple, hairy moon creatures. And if you saw the thumbnail of this video of an alternate cover of the book, you'll see what an artist kind of interpreted them to look like. And so he starts realizing something's amiss and it's a trope that we're used to now, but this book came out in 1949. It, was this the first parallel universe or multiverse book or novel that was written? I'm sure there's probably some Twilight Zone episodes or something like that, but I couldn't really find anything in, in the little bit of research I did. If, if you know of any parallel universe books, or multiverse books that came out pre-1949, please leave those down in the comments. I'm just kind of curious about that. And, but, but what our main character realizes is he's in a different universe, he doesn't really like it, and he wants to get back home. So we spend the rest of the novel kind of following him 
on this mission to try to get back. Now the book was only 180 pages, so it was a pretty fast read. And I got through it pretty quick. Let's go over some pros and cons next. The pros, this was just a fun, easy, lighthearted read that had some comedy, some satire about science fiction and pulp magazines. It had satire about the way women are di displayed or talked about in these books, which I thought was really interesting. And it was just overall just a really fun, easy read. As far as cons, there's not really a lot of cons for something like this. Just just looking at the, the cover of this book, I mean, you know what you're going to get into with something like this. And it lived up to the expectations. I thought the ending would be a little weak, and it was it was okay, but that was maybe the, the biggest little, the biggest gripe I had, which wasn't even a gripe, so we'll just leave it at that. This is a solid four-star read for me, and I think anyone that's into science fiction, especially the older science fiction, you'd probably love this book. Pick it up and give it a go. If, if you haven't read any Frederick Brown, I'm not sure if this is a great place to start. There was some comedy. I was expecting a little bit more comedy, but I'm definitely eager to read some more of his books in the future, some of his short stories and novels, and hopefully to get a little bit more comedy in those. So that's about it for that review. And the next book I'm reading is another book in my series of masterpieces of science fiction. And it's called No Enemy But Time by Michael Bishop. I just started this, just got through the prologue a little bit. Very interesting, not sure where he's gonna go with it, but it's pretty entertaining so far. So look for a video review of that one in the near future. Well, thanks for watching again, and we'll see you around.